Hello everyone, in this video we will learn about recursion. Simply put, recursion is a technique where a function calls itself again and again until an exit condition is met. To understand this, let's start by taking a simple example. Suppose we have to write a function which takes a number as input and prints out all the numbers starting from that number up to 0. That is, if the input is 3, the function will output 3, 2, 1, 0, that is, starting from 3, we are printing all the numbers up to 0, which means we are subtracting 1 from the starting number at every step. Similarly, if the input is 2, the output would be 2, 1, 0. Finally, if the input is 0, then the output would be 0. And as evident from these examples, we can identify our exit condition, that is, if we reach 0, we have to stop calling this function. Now let's write a recursive function to simulate this. Suppose I write a function print number till 0, which takes an integer as input, which is the starting number, and as the first step simply prints out that number. Now within this function only, we call the same function again, but now we will subtract 1 from the number and pass it as the parameter of the next function call. Now what will happen within this function is that this function will call itself again and again by subtracting 1 from the number at every step. Now as you can imagine, this can lead to an infinite call of this function if we don't have an exit condition in place. And for this example, we have the exit condition as when the number is equal to 0, we will return out of this function. That is, we will stop calling this function. Now let's simulate an actual example through this function. Suppose we call the function with the value of number as 2. So the first time the function gets executed, the value 2 is printed out and then we check for the exit condition and as the value of number is not equal to 0, the exit condition is not called and we move forward and recursively call the function again but this time passing the value as number minus 1 which in this case is 2 minus 1 equal to 1. So the function again gets called and the number 1 is printed. Then we again check for the exit condition and as the value of number is 1, the exit condition is not met. So we again call this function with the value 0. Now in this call, the value 0 is printed and when we check for the exit condition, the value of number is equal to 0. Therefore, we return out of this function which breaks the recursive call loop and our program has successfully executed. So this gives us a basic idea of how a recursive function works where the function calls itself again and again until an exit condition is met. Now as evident from the last example, recursion is useful when you have to do a repetitive task where only the input or the output values change at every step. Also, exit condition is crucial when using recursion as it defines when to stop calling the function and prevent an infinite loop. Now let's move forward to understand how we can calculate factorial of a number with recursion. Now what we mean by a factorial of a number is, a factorial is used to compute the number of permutations of arranging a set of n numbers. That is, in how many different ways can you arrange a set of n numbers, which in terms of mathematical formula is denoted by an exclamation mark, which is equal to multiplication of all the numbers starting from 1 up to the number n. Taking some examples, the factorial of number 3 would be 1 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3, which is equal to 6. Similarly, the factorial of number 6 would be all the numbers multiplied from 1 to 6, which is equal to 720. Now following this definition, we can see that factorial of 1 would be 1. Now an interesting thing here is that the factorial of number 0 is also equal to 1 because an empty set can only be ordered in one way. So through these examples, we know how factorial of a number works. And now we have to write a function which takes the input as a number for which we have to calculate the factorial and outputs the multiplication of all the numbers starting from 1 up to the number n. And as we can see, we are doing a repetitive task of multiplying numbers from 1 to n. We can use recursion to calculate factorials. To do this, what we already know is that factorial of a number n is multiplication of all the numbers from 1 to n. So we can see that factorial of a number n minus 1 would be multiplication of all the numbers from 1 to n minus 1. Now if we combine the statements 1 and 2, we can say that factorial of a number n is equal to factorial of n minus 1 multiplied by n. And as you can observe the pattern, 
if we create a function to calculate the factorial of n, we can say that it is equal to function to calculate factorial of n minus 1 multiplied by n. So from the fourth statement, we can say that we have to write a function which multiplies the number n with the factorial of its previous number until we reach 1, where 1 is our exit condition and we know that the factorial of 1 is equal to 1. So now let's write a program to calculate factorial of a number. Firstly, we start by declaring a function factorial which takes an argument n of type integer which is the number for which we want to calculate the factorial and returns an integer value which is the factorial of the number n. Now as we have previously defined that a function to calculate factorial of n will be equal to function call of factorial of n minus 1 multiplied by n. Now let's write the same recursive call inside our function where we multiply n by function call of factorial n minus 1. And as previously defined, we need an exit condition to break the recursive call. And for that, we will check if the value of n is equal to 1 or the value of n is equal to 0, we will return 1 as we know that factorial of 1 is equal to 1 and the factorial of 0 is again equal to 1. Now you must be wondering that we previously defined that our exit condition is when n equals to 1. So why we have included n equal to 0 in the exit condition? That is to handle the edge case if we directly input the value of n as 0, we should return its factorial as 1. And if the value of n is other than the exit condition, we will simply call our recursive function. Now let's complete our program by writing the main function where we declare two variables n and result where n is the number for which we want to calculate the factorial and the result is the factorial of that number. So firstly, we will take a positive integer input and assign its value to n. Then we will call the factorial function by passing n as the argument and we will assign the return value to result. And finally, we will output the calculated factorial of the number. Now let's run an example through this program to understand how this code works. So let's say we input the value of n as 4 and in the next line we calculate the factorial of number 4 and assign its value to the variable result. Now when we resolve the function call, we firstly check for the exit condition and as the value of n is equal to 4 which is not equal to 1 or 0, the exit condition is not met and we move to the else part where we return n into factorial of n minus 1 which in this case would be 4 into factorial of 3. Now again we will resolve for the function call of factorial of 3. So again we check for the exit condition and as the exit condition is not met, we move to the else part and again resolve this function call as 3 into factorial of 2. Repeating the process, we can again see that the exit condition is not met and we can resolve the factorial of 2 function call as 2 into factorial of 1. Now at this step, when we resolve the function call for factorial of 1, we see that we are meeting the exit condition as the value of n is equal to 1. So we will return 1 in this case. Now with this, we have reached the exit condition of our recursive function call and we can start resolving our function calls one by one to calculate the factorial. Now starting from the bottom, we will return 1, which will resolve this function call as 2 into 1, which is equal to 2. Now we will return this value to the above function call, which will resolve this as 3 into 2, which is equal to 6. And we will pass on this value to the above function call which will in turn give us 4 into 6 which is equal to 24 and we will return that value to our first function call which will give us the factorial of number 4 as 24. Now with this example, I hope it's clear how recursive function calls take place and how crucial an exit condition is to stop the recursive call and return the calculated values. So that was all for this video. Thank you for watching.